When you heard this news that your mom had converted to Christianity, it shocked your, your family, your siblings included. Yeah, it completely shocked me because uh, it's something that is unexpected in the Muslim community. And so what was happening in your life at that time? Were you thinking, okay, I'll accept Jesus, I'll go in that direction, or were you against it? What were your thoughts? The funny thing is I was just thinking about what other people would think. Mm. That's it. I was thinking what my family would think, what my f Muslim friends would think. I was thinking of all those times I went to Islam school and, and I had to memorize the Quran. Mm -hmm. What was that for? Mm -hmm. It was for nothing. You wasted our time, Mom. Like, what is this? So it, a lot of questions ran in my mind. So what was your relationship with God? For me, it was more of what I can do for God. I think the oh. difference and, I, and I'm starting to realize that now as yeah. more as I follow Jesus, the difference was me trying to prove to God that I'm worthy. Mm -hmm. So all my life I'm working and working, trying to bring my good deeds up. Mm -hmm. Even though there was bad deeds, I was trying to outnumber those bad deeds by doing good deeds. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that was my relationship with God, which came through, you know, five prayers and, and memorizing the Quran was one of them. You know, the more I memorized, the more people knew that I knew the Quran, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was like, okay, God is accepting me that way, and I'm going to continue doing that. And you also talk about being focused on self. You were focused on your career, on you know accomplishing things, and it was more focused on you than anything else. Yeah, exactly. And that actually happened when, when my mom made that decision and she told me about her following Christ. Mm -hmm. I realized, you know, I came to the conclusion, you know what, if she's not following Christ, I mean, if she's not following Islam, mm -hmm. um, you know what, you know, I can do whatever I want now because I'm, I'm not subjected anymore, if, especially my mom is not doing that. So what had happened was I went on my own road uh, because I was on somebody else's road, which is my family's road. And since that broke, I went on my own road and I started doing things that I wanted to do and I couldn't do because of my religion. Uh, like what? Like things like, you know, coming to Canada, in a Western world, yeah. uh, you have these imaginations in terms of you know partying and doing this and getting the girls. So you build that up in your mind, and when you come to a place to Canada and you figure out that you have some kind of freedom, mm. you tend to. It's like a list that you go through, you know. And if I go through this list, I'm going to be so happy because these people on TV looked so happy. Mm. So what happened is I had that list in my mind and I went for it. So one night you come home. And you're intoxicated. Yeah. So I come home. I was completely drunk, and and you know it. It. I had that feeling of having the best night of my life. Mm -hmm. That's that kind of feeling. I came in and walked in, and I look over, and my mom was praying for me as I walked in. Well, this is like three, four o'clock. Yeah. In the so this is this is really early in the morning, not expecting her to be awake, and um, so I see that and. I think at that moment I realized it was more than just a motherly love. There's something else that she is, you know, uh, putting her faith in. And, and, and I think that was that seed, that mustard seed that God talks about is that little thing that you say, you know what, maybe there's something there. Mm -hmm. So I come home um, and, and I see that on her knees and it just changed my mind in, in, in different ways, right? Mm. So. so you decided to do something interesting. So you prayed. And you pray to God, to Jesus, you're just like, you're just sending out a prayer. Yeah, so what happened is like, I, I came home one day and, and I looked in the mirror. I was actually, you know, getting ready to go for bed, but I looked in the mirror and I was like, this can't be it. Mm. There has to be something more because every time I reach a, a desire or a goal, it like fades away. Mm. It never stays. And I said, you know what, this can't be it because if I'm seeking something and I'm not getting it, then that means something is wrong. So I looked in the mirror and, and, and I said that to myself. And then I went and he said, you know, Allah, God, wh whoever, whatever it is, I know there's something more. Mm. Show me, show me something so I can seek that thing that, that, that's rather than something that's a lie, mm -hmm. right? So, and that's what happened. What happened? <laughs> so I'm expecting like, a miracle, I'm going to change my life and I'm going to become amazing. Yeah. But what happened was I started remembering sins and bad things that I did in the past. And it was almost like my conscience revived, right? And, and it was like I felt bad and gross about the things that I did way back in the past, even the things before my mom uh, um, changed, right? So, and I remembered, even, it doesn't matter how much good deeds I do, those bad deeds are still there. Mm. 
right? It needs to be, it, something needs to happen to those things in order for me to be ready for God. So these things started coming up. And I remember, you know, at work, working, coming down for a smoke. And I'm just, why do I keep remembering things? My conscience is like coming alive. And it felt so weird uh, and almost disgusted. So I came home and, and <laughs> I went on my knees because I couldn't handle it anymore. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I went on my knees and, and I said, God, forgive me. Forgive me what I did. And, and I, felt, I felt the forgiveness from Jesus Christ. Wow. So, now, do you think as a Muslim, if you had prayed that prayer, would you have felt that now all of those deeds are gone, all of, the, all of, all of that past sin is gone? No. What, what is the difference between Jesus and the, the other faith that you had before? There is, there is the biggest difference, and, and there's a lot of people who think that there's no difference. Yeah. It's a huge difference because what we do for God, in Islam, we work to get uh, the good de to get good deeds so that it can weigh out the bad deeds. Mm -hmm. That is a complete lie. Our God is perfect and He is awesome and He is the perfect judge. And if your God is going to wink at your sin, mm -hmm. then He's not a God. Mm -hmm. So the difference is that uh, in Christianity is that God did it. Mm -hmm. And because He did it, out of the abundance of God's love, mm -hmm. and that's when you do your the good things. That's why that's why you pray. That's why you go, you know, and turn the other cheek and love the people that you do, that that usually you don't love because God's love because He did this for you. Mm -hmm. You forgive because God forgave you. So it is the abundance of God's love. And Islam is more like I gotta reach for God. Why you gotta reach for God? Mm -hmm. Why you gotta reach for God if 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 God can't forgive you and you can just go to Him without? you know, showing off or showing your good deeds, right? And so as you prayed that prayer, all of those past sins are now on Jesus. They are laid at his feet. You do not bear any of them ever again. That's right. How do you feel about that now? The thing is, you read, you read the Bible, right? Uh, a lot of the times when we read the Bible, it's like a story, mm. right? And it never comes to life. And I think what happened to me throughout these three years, I started realizing that the Word of God is actually alive. Mm. We're not reading just words. Jesus was alive. Mm. He walked on this earth. He is Lord. Mm. And he healed and He's healing right now. He's healing people. People are changing their minds. I'm a, I'm a testimony mm. that my mom prayed and God changed my heart. My brother, my sister, they all change. Miracles, everything we see that the Bible says, it happens. And I wanna like tell people that, is that God is not dead. He's here and He's actively healing and He's actively changing people, right? And so that's, that's my three years is that the Word of God is alive. And as I'm reading the Word and I see the change in my life, I almost wanna tell people that, right? Mm. So. I think that that's what mainly the three years for me is that God's work becomes alive. I want to encourage you at home that are watching, especially parents, you might be praying for that child that you're just like, God, please bring that person, bring that child to Jesus. Ahmed is a perfect example of God answering prayers and it might take years. I know Ahmed's mom was praying for him and his siblings for years, but this is the fruition. This is the fruit of her diligent prayer. So don't give up. I'm encouraging you. Ahmed's encouraging you. Keep praying for your children. God hears you and he will answer your prayers. The prayer lines are at the bottom of your screen, 1-866-273. 4444. And if you're watching and you just simply don't know Jesus, you have no idea who He is, our prayer partners would love to introduce you to Him today.